Okay, so this literally is just a little experiment to work with the idea of trying to get more tr um, detail into areas that are steep slopes. So uh, I've started off here with a mountain and I played with the seed until I got one of those situations where I got lots of really steep slopes, which and it happens, right? You get these things that are they're just thin and, and tall and we get these areas that are very difficult to de uh, detail. You, you want to get information in them, but when you look at it from the top, you can tell that they're incredibly thin and that's the reason why we can't get that there. So it's very limited what we can get into that region. So the kinds of information that we can get into here are things like um, straight up and down data. So things that look like kind of cracks that will go in this direction or straight down. And um, you want variation, right? You want variation to the shape, which you can get. Um, but that's the kind of thing that we're looking at. So we're looking at for stuff that will go, you know, maybe in striations or whatever, um, or or otherwise. Like then they're, they're just going through through the space. So getting rid of that. Um, that's the kind of information I can get. I can go across, I can go diagonally, and I can have rugged information that way, but I won't get a lot of overall detail in here that's, you know, shaped. So um, one of the first things to do is to look for the ability to maybe thicken it up a little bit so that everything that you're doing is not subtracting but adding because something that's thin is already losing data. So one of the first things that I tried, of course, was, uh, of course, isolating the region right acknowledging kind of where it is and um, we can see here i've done a slope and i've set it to a really high min value and the max is set to the top so thickening it out i get from here to here and that gives me a little bit of extra working space and i can try things like cells for example and cells, I just set it to its minimum scale. I get lots of little chunks. Now it's not very realistic, but that's not really what I need it for. I don't need it to be realistic. I need it to be giving me shape and information. And then I can worry about, you know, breaking that up in other ways. One of the ways that we can break it up is we could take a page from something like the uh, the stacks, where it goes ahead and duplicates it, uh, displaces it, and then adds it back in. And so we've got cells here. We displace it. I set it to rugged and then bring it back in and now I've got more variation than I had previously so I got you know smaller breakups and variation through you know these different pieces another thing that we could do is we could go from here we could go to stratify and again remember we're using the aperture to thicken it out because when it's already thin you don't want to be subtractive you want to do something that you can add so um, this adds shelves and different kind of heights of these shelves all over the place. And then when we add it with the craziness and chaos that we got from there, now it starts to look a little bit more like a pile of rocks. Another way that we can get quite extreme variation, again, going starting from an aperture and then going to cells, but this time with a lot of chaos. So again, it's minimized, but a lot of chaos and we're getting really high variations. Well, taking something like this and blending it with it itself again, you can see what that's done. And in here, um, I've just merged it with that slope type. We can see now we get lots of breakup in terms of slices, chunks. So if I were to take this chaotic thing it back with itself using a shattered version of the slope mask right with a little bit of a breakup uh, we get something like this so we're coming from this to this right lots of nice little detail in the slopes and if we add the really extreme stuff a little bit of that and again you just determine how much you want to to come across now we have that the, the breakup in the flat surfaces, but now we also have these crevices kind of breaking in through these different regions here. So with all of that, of course, if we would wanted to do something like a snowfall, for example, it's got lots more to purchase on than say this initial base, right? 
So we get big blobs, there's nothing going on in here. And if we go ahead and do the same thing with this newer form, we get lots of little details and chunks all over the place. So of course, with more detail, um, we can pull back from you know earlier versions which have lots of uh, variation in it. And so in the process of building it, we can extract some of this stuff for the use and adding some of that more detail into a, uh, a texture mask. So here I've done a soil, then I shattered it, and then I did a soil on that soil. And then to marry it back with the final shape, I did a soil on the final shape, and then combine those together. And so it adds lots of little tiny variations throughout the piece. Um, using things like Snowfall, uh, playing with the scale and terrain size and get some slope information in there. So we take this, and we add a little bit of that, and now we've got all those tiny little variations. We've got you know some base areas and some steep areas. And we can do different sort of sat maps to those. So similar to what I've shown before, where we use soil and, and the uh, snowfall in my other video, right? When we blend them together, we end up with zones that work within a single sat map. Combining those together, the uh, uh, what I like to do is you know play with warms versus colds, and they uh, naturally desaturate each other. So they they leave some of it behind, but they're you know they're muted, not super rich. Uh, over here, we're taking um, flow and snowfall, doing the same sort of thing. And we're using that and using it to darken some regions here. So it's just a subtraction. So I'm coming from that, and then I'm subtracting this other thing to add sort of wet dirt regions and a little bit of uh, color correction to bring it back into the tone that I'm going to be using, which is some. On grass. So again, coming off here, shattering that to break up the pattern, doing some sat maps, and then pulling in some alternate data. So I was just looking for clumps. It's going to just give me a different green pattern and mix that with the other one in a difference. And I got this neat little thing, which with some color variation, adjusting hue saturation, auto levels to try and get it in there. I can then, like, I'm, I know that I'm not worried about the rock because the rock's not going to stay there. It's going to be replaced with my other one. So a lot of that detail in there, again, comes from those initial passes of playing with things like cells and stratify and whatnot, and just using small amounts of them to add complexity and chaos to your flat surfaces. And of course, isolating those. So hopefully that gives you some ideas. I'm going to do another breakdown where I go look at a different terrain, which is this one. It's a snowy mountain terrain uh, that employed several uh, similar methods in order to get things like the detail and the texture across here and getting these snowy slopes. But there's some other techniques involved in, in this uh, breakout. So I'll be doing that video in a little bit. So you can check for that one.